Hello, everyone. We have people joining, lots of people joining. Um, welcome to our Language Influencers panel with uh, six great guests from all around the world. Canada, Spain, Mexico, USA, Germany. And uh, those are six wonderful... Wait, one is missing. Pierre is missing. Okay, we're five. <laughs> We have five wonderful uh, language YouTubers that are going to speak today about how it is to have a language YouTube channel, how it is to teach languages online. And uh, before we get to the intro round of the people that are participating here, let's hear it from you. Where are you from? Where are you uh, currently? And uh, just write it in the chat to let us know where you are. So we have somebody from Berlin, Munich, The Hague, Lisbon, where else? Dresden, Chicago, great, from the USA, Mexico, Guatemala, Spain, Brazil, Zurich, Zurich, Paderborn, Buenos Aires, great, lots of people. Awesome. Um, so let's start with a quick introductory round. And um, so everyone can quickly introduce themselves and their channel and what it is about. And I'll just start in the um, in the direction that I see people. So I'll start with Anya, you're at the top left for me. Um, please introduce yourself and your channel. All right, thank you, Gabriel. Um, so my name is Anya. I often use the name on social media, Anya from Alemania, because it describes a little bit um, my background. So I was born and raised in Germany. Actually, I saw someone here from uh, Paderborn. This is very close to my, to my hometown, about 20 minutes from my hometown, it's very interesting. Uh, born and raised in Germany, um, but um, I live in Mexico now for almost seven years. And even before that, uh, I always lived in, in different countries, in the French part of Switzerland, in France, uh, in the French part of Canada as well. Um, so yeah, um, nice to see you all here and uh, looking forward to your questions. Cool, thank you very much. And uh, do you want to speak a bit about your channel as well? Sure. Um, so yeah, I'm the founder of Zaloa Languages and um, we cover, um, we focus on three parts. The first one is uh, German for Spanish speakers, our uh, channels um, on YouTube, Instagram, and also Facebook group Deutsch mit Zaloa, Deutsch lernen mit Zaloa on YouTube. Um, that's how you can find us. It's specifically for Spanish speakers. And then we also have um, a Spanish learning community. This is mostly expats uh, who are currently living in Mexico or want to live in Mexico. Um, so this is Español con Saloa. Um, and then we focus also on indigenous languages um, from Mexico. There's 68 indigenous languages in Mexico. Um, and we currently focus on uh, Nahuatl. So also there you can find information looking for Nahuatl con Saloa. Great, thank you very much. And uh, let's continue with Elisabeth. Hello everyone, I'm very glad to be here. Thank you again for the invitation. My name is Elisabeth. I was uh, born and raised in Barcelona, Span Spain, <laughs> Spanian for design. Um, and we are living here with my family since uh, 2012, also, uh, almost uh, no, uh, almost nine years from now, and and we are learning a lot since then. I opened a channel, uh, the size uh, Chronicas Germanicas channel. There I share uh, I share with my, my with my audience my uh, life in Germany, but not also um, uh, I also share with my experience. I, um, I think the important thing for my channel is that I share my point of view from the German culture. German culture um, is something that we don't really learn in, in the academy. And we learn German, that is very important, but we don't really learn German culture. And uh, I find, mm, I always uh, speak about uh, with respect, uh, it's not better, uh, Spanish culture, it's not better German culture, it's uh, everything uh, important, but the difference um, 
to know the difference between the cultures is something that it's it's I, I find really amazing and I try to share that with my audience and I, I have a lot of fun because with my audience I also learn a lot from them because uh, now, of course I don't know everything I ask uh, a lot to my audience and uh, they participate and I enjoy the, uh, a lot with them. Great, thank you very much. And Jim and May. Hi, thank you. So we are Jim and Mai from Spanish and Go. I am Mexican. I am a language teacher. Jaime or Jim is from the US and we live in Puerto Rico and at Spanish and Go, we help people connect with the language and with the culture of Spanish speaking countries. So. Anything? We, yeah, you want to add to that? <laughs> well, we do that through our YouTube channel, which is mainly aimed at beginners who are interested in moving to or, or visiting Spanish speaking countries. We also have a podcast that is all in Spanish that uh, has a membership with a bunch of extra materials to help people understand um, everything we're being, everything that is said in all of the podcast episodes. Mm -hmm. And we also run Spanish immersion retreats during, during non-pandemic times to Mexico. And we have three cities in Mexico uh, where we're running those, or where we have them set up to run when uh, we all get vaccinated. Cool, thanks. And uh, Steve. Hi, my name is Steve Kaufman. I'm in uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. And uh, I guess my, my third career in a way has been this involvement with language, language learning. And as part of that, I have a, a YouTube channel, which I call Lingo Steve. And together with my son, we started a language learning platform or community called link, L-I-N-G-Q dot com. Um, I enjoy learning languages. Uh, as I say, third career, most of my career, I was, or my professional life, I was in the lumber business. I was briefly a diplomat before that, but for the last 15 years, I've been learning languages. So my channel is kind of an extension of my activity. Uh, I share with people what I'm doing right now. I'm learning Persian and Arabic. Um, I share with my community, you know, my views on language learning, uh, the emphasis being to encourage people and to kind of uh, reduce the level of stress or frustration that some people feel when they're, um, success doesn't meet their expectations. Maybe they should lower their expectations. Uh, and I do this in English and in other languages. And I've really enjoyed uh, being part of this community. And, and I think what's important too, because we're all speaking European languages here, other than Nahuatl, which I'm not speaking, but might one day. Uh, it's a, you know, one thing with language learning, you discover that uh, what they taught you at school, which in the case of Canada, centered around uh, in North America and the Kings of England, uh, actually, there's a great big world out there, Central Asia, East Asia, Latin America, indigenous cultures. And I think language is a great way to explore and discover these and expand uh, our understanding of what it means to be a human being. Great. Thanks very much, Steve. And uh, while I introduce myself, myself, can you write in the chat which channels you already know, which channels you already follow? And I already have one question in the chat. Um, if every one of you can share their channel uh, in the chat or, or change your name so that people can find your channel. All right. Uh, so yeah, my name is Gabriel. Um, I switched places with Elizabeth. I'm from Germany, but I'm in Spain currently, uh, in Gran Canaria, actually. And um, I have, which is why my internet might be a bit unstable. So um, uh, if, if I, if, if my, my uh, image disappears, somebody please take over. <laughs> Um, I run the channel as Spring Spanish, and uh, contrary to the other participants, um, I'm not the face of that channel. We have five uh, Spanish teachers that publish five weekly uh, lessons, and I have one of our teachers here, Juan, uh, thank you, <laughs> who is writing in the chat right now. And uh, we teach uh, Spanish through chunks, which means that you don't learn grammar, you don't learn words, but you learn the combination of both. So. Um, how are you going? Merry Christmas, word combinations, uh, so that you don't, which are already applied words and uh, grammar together. All right, so Elizabeth already left. Uh, no idea where she went. Maybe she has unstable internet too. Um, and uh, let's continue. And don't forget to write 
which channels you already know. And Elisa at this back. And uh, let's go on to the next question, which is uh, why, when and why did you start your channel? And uh, let's begin with Anya. Okay, yeah, for uh, in my case, it's actually um, more a community channel. So in, in terms of the uh, channel for German learners, um, I do it mostly, but especially like on, on Instagram and all the other channels, um, we have a team and, and different people are working on that because um, I also believe that it's important when you learn the language, not only listen, uh, always to the same voice, but also to different voices, different ages, uh, and so on. So um, how did we start? Actually, I, I founded my company back in 2015, five years ago, first in, in Germany, but back then I was already living in, um, in Mexico. Um, and so like after two years, I moved the whole company, the administrative part, uh, over to Mexico. Um, and then I realized because we were starting with the German and, and doing everything in English because we thought, well, for Mexicans, especially if they want to learn German, then I guess they know more or less English, right? And we figured, yes, they knew English, but it's so different when you speak to a person in their native language. So I guess there is lots of Mexicans who could learn a German in, um, from a, like, an English perspective, and many do. But they connect so much more if they have it from a native speaker and then who speaks their mother tongue, in that case, Spanish. So in the end, that's why we started this, because when we started all this, now there is more and more people coming, uh, opening uh, Spanish speaking channels for learning German. But back then there wasn't that many. And uh, that was actually the reason why we started, because we wanted something specifically for a Spanish speaker in terms of German. And then the indigenous languages, why we started all that. So we would do like every month a video um, a showing our uh, process of, of learning Nahuatl, which is one of the indigenous languages in, in Mexico. And that was the main idea is basically to, to spread the idea of learning indigenous languages, which many people are not yet um, maybe used to. Um, uh, or maybe have not even heard about those indigenous languages. And uh, we just wanted to show also how it's possible because it's so different compared to like a popular language like German or Spanish um, in terms of materials and sound. So that's basically the two reasons why we started to give value that actually didn't exist back then as a channel or in that form. That's why we started. Thank you. And Jim and May, why did you start your Spanish learning channel? Yeah, well, it all started when I decided to learn Spanish, ended up meeting Mai on a language exchange website and visited Mexico on my own for the first time. And traveling through Mexico together, we really discovered that we, we thoroughly enjoyed learning about each other's cultures and traveling around Mexico and learning about the differences in vocabulary and grammar in different Spanish-speaking countries. And so we decided to combine our forces so I could get away from being in front of a computer screen all the time because I used to run a recording studio in my hometown, which um, is fun, but uh, you get tired of being in the same room all the time when there's a whole world out there to explore. So when we met, um, well, my is a teacher, she's a language teacher, and my background is with recording audio and video. So we thought, well, how about we uh, start a podcast and we can share these things that we've been learning with other people, uh, different cultural aspects, things about cost of living, different holidays and traditions and food. And uh, we didn't originally launch that initial podcast, but then we decided, oh, well, video, yeah, video is the future anyway. So let's pivot. And so, through all that, we're going through immigration and we decided, yeah, let's let's go with the channel. So we started the channel in 2016, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that other uh, podcast, we started it in 2011. So the idea uh, was there for, well, almost 10 years now. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, yeah, we decided to go with the YouTube channel. And this past year, during the pandemic, we had all of the time in the world to finally start the podcast. And so, 
finally, yeah, we, we started that last year. But yeah, I wanted to be like the, the bridge between people in my country, Mexico, and my language, Spanish. I'm kind of like I was with Jim when we met. So that's the reason I think we, we decided to start the channel and everything else. Cool, thank you. And uh, Steve, your channel has been around for a really long time. And, uh, but contrary to the others, you speak about languages and language learning in general. So uh, yeah, when did you start your channel and what was the idea behind it? Um, yeah, I started the channel um, not knowing much about YouTube. I mean, you go back 15 years ago and someone said, you should have a channel on YouTube. And so I didn't know what, what, you know, what that would imply. And part of it, of course, is because we have our activity at Link, then we felt we should have a YouTube channel to go with it. Um, Link, of course, was developed largely because I had, back going back 15, 20 years, I had books here in German and Spanish, and every page had five, six, ten words underlined that I, I never learned. I'd look them up and forget them. And so I thought there must be a better way. And so that led to Link, and then from that on to my channel. Uh, and the thing has just grown and uh, it's an interesting experience, uh, you know, how interacting with people, trying to figure out, obviously, y you want to have, you know, you play around with things like my son is always saying, well, you should use these keywords in order to attract more people and stuff. Yeah, but I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about something else. And so there's this constant, you know, I wouldn't say, pull and tug to try and find something that's genuine, authentic, and yet from a YouTube marketing point of view still touches on some of these things that are going to give us more, uh, you know, a better response. Uh, so that's what I do. I, I did see a couple of questions here in the chat box. Uh, is it appropriate for me to respond? They were directed at me. Sure. Go ahead. Okay. So one question was, uh, and I, I jotted them down here, but uh, uh, someone living in Paris wants to know if I can recommend some uh, intermediate level books on Ukrainian history. Uh, okay. Um, books, uh, I, I presume this is in Ukrainian. Uh, I found some wonderful material, um, and you can contact me by email. Uh, there's uh, Zelezniak, I think, who does a wonderful, uh, and also, because when I learn, I need both the audiobook and the ebook. So I have both audiobook and ebook on a number of, uh, you know, different versions of Ukrainian history. Which, and I've also listened to Ukrainian history from the perspective of the Poles and the Russians, and I can assure you it's quite different. So Ukrainian history is very, very interesting. Uh, another question is of my languages, how many do I speak well or not well? I mean, I like to say there's about 10 or 12 of them that I can comfortably launch into and speak, and another 10 that uh, would be a struggle. I'd have to refresh them before I could actually engage in the conversation. Um, also, some people are saying, you know, I speak Persian, I speak Arabic, how can I help? The biggest help, I think, I, I can't spend my day talking with people uh, on the internet. The biggest thing is to create content. Uh, you know, I, I read a, a Wikipedia article in Arabic. Could someone record that for me in Arabic? We're allowed to use Wikipedia at Link. Um, simple people talking about themselves. I get material like that from Iran. Uh, I got a very a simplified history of, of Iran from this person in Iran. If we can create intermediate level content for learners of different languages, I think that's a, a major contribution that people can make in their native language. Great, thanks very much, Steve. And uh, as the next question, I wanna to touch upon what you just said about uh, doing content the way you like versus what the algorithm kind of asks you to do. But uh, before we get there, let's, uh, let's ask Elizabeth, uh, when did you ask your, uh, when did you start your channel and why did you do that? To tell you the truth, uh, I started my channel because uh, I didn't really know that people were interested in the videos because uh, I started with my blog and on the blog I, um, I was thinking about uh, more that I, um, I need more visuals because I love writing but sometimes when you have to explain something it's better to show it and that's why I started to, 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 to record my videos in order to help my post on my blog. And now, and at that time, I opened this video uh, YouTube channel uh, and, I, and I thought, okay, no one is going to look at this. Uh, I'm going to use that only for my <laughs> post on the blog. 
Um, I, I remember when I was doing a presentation for a partnership with, um, a, a, with a sponsor at that time from my blog, and I had 192 followers in my YouTube channel. And someone that was going to help you with my presentation said, I wouldn't really write here um, that you 100 followers has. Uh, and I thought, okay, yeah, that's right. But I keep with posting my blog posts with videos and I realized the video, the, the followers were increasing and increasing and increasing. And I thought, why are the followers so increasing? That's the point that I realized that there are a lot of people that uh, uh, love this, um, not, not, I'm not saying that because of my videos, but this kind of content, visual content. That's why I split my blog together with my YouTube channel. And now I'm in really, really enjoying together my, with my other YouTubers, uh, colleagues, um, sharing German culture uh, in Spanish with my YouTube channel. And um, that's how I started. Great, thanks very much. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I, I wanna touch upon what, what Steve just said. And I think that's a really big question in the YouTube community right now, because um, you can be really passionate about a topic and then you publish a video on that and then nothing happens. And then you just do a video on something else and it just blows up and you're like, oh, I, I, that, that's not a good video or I didn't, that's not a topic I, I like to. And so many YouTubers are forced to go in another direct or feel forced to uh, go into another direction. And uh, yeah, so my question to you would be, how how do you deal with this? Has that is that happening to your videos as well? Um, maybe talk a bit more about uh, your videos and passion against algorithm. And let's start with Anya. Um, yes, definitely. I think it happens uh, to everyone when we obviously we we also analyze uh, our videos, and uh, sometimes then it's also that after like a couple of weeks or months there's suddenly a change that i can't even explain why <laughs> but uh, somehow then after a couple of weeks you're like mm, okay apparently that was very interesting so what we usually like is is to give extremely high value to to our viewers in terms of for the german channel in terms of like about the german language for spanish speakers we do live classes and so on and then sometimes there's just content that we don't find very relevant for learning the language or integrating or finding a job or something related to that, um, but that works. And um, so I think it's it's a good mix. It's 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 always good to to mix. And I don't think there is anything like bad about also building a strategy if you if you want to grow the channel. At least that's what we do, and and I feel okay doing it. Um, so what we usually do is we have our list with topics that we know would work. But then I honestly, I often feel like, okay, but others have done that before. Like, uh, where is like the value that I bring into this? Um, so we do now a mix of topics that we know uh, people want to watch and, and they've worked in the past, they've worked on other channels too. Um, and then we do uh, topics that we really wanna do. And then we also do topics that people ask us about and we don't really know how it's gonna do. Um, and then for indigenous languages, I think that's a completely uh, different uh, topic because it's, it's way harder and, and I feel like the algorithm is, is completely different and for us it, it has been really hard. We have, actually have, uh, the more we share it in, in different uh, groups outside of YouTube, the better it is, but through YouTube itself it has been so far really hard because not really a lot of people are looking for indigenous uh, languages for Mexico. Um, uh, so that's a, a tricky part that uh, we haven't solved yet, to be honest. <laughs> okay, cool. And uh, Jim and May, what about you? Yeah, well, it seems like the audience has a sixth sense knowing that if we're making content specifically to make the algorithm happy or like SEO happy, right? So if you target a term that a lot of people search for and you just make a video because of that, it may do well, 
But unless you're passionate about it or you're presenting it in a way that's maybe extra engaging compared to other videos that cover that topic already, it's not necessarily going to do really well. YouTube is the second largest uh, search engine in the world, just second to Google, and Google owns them. So it's certainly a good strategy to try to rank well uh, for popular keywords, but you have to do something that holds people's attention for longer. You have to create a thumbnail that's extra engaging, that's going to make them want to click on your video versus somebody else, somebody else's video who covers the same topic. So it is a little tricky. And I think in general, when you make a video that's just something that's interesting to you, more than likely, there are tons of people who are also interested in that. And even if you create the video and the SEO element isn't really there, like maybe you can't find where a lot of people are searching for this, but if you're passionate about it and it's something you want to talk about, it seems like that's the sort of content that really resonates with your audience or audiences in general. Anything you want to add? I was just going to say that we have done both. Like we, from the start of our channel, we noticed that there were some type of videos that people preferred to watch because maybe they didn't know about like us as people. So we started with the more like how to do this in Spanish, more um, um, search friendly. And after that, then we decided, okay, we have the basis of the things that we want people to learn or what they should learn before traveling to any Spanish speaking country. And so little by little, we started um, with the travel videos, which we also do a lot. So we started with like the SEO in mind, and then we kind of like started working on the things that we wanted to show more of. And yes, some videos do better than others, but I think it's part of the YouTube game, right? <laughs> yeah, there's certainly videos that we thought, uh, maybe we shouldn't even publish this one. And then we release it and it gets over 100,000 views. Yeah. And others, we think, oh, so many people are searching for this topic. We're going to make the best video we can about it. And then it flops. So you just never know sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks. And uh, yeah, Steve, you basically already answered that question. You don't really care about the algorithm. But uh, is there anything else you want to add to that? <laughs> well, um, the problem is, so I'm told, oh, you should use these keywords. And so I say, okay, send me a bunch of keywords. The keywords are all the same. Learn languages, you know. I mean, the, the range of things that I talk about is somewhat limited. I'm talking about language learning. And so I can basically fit what I have to say into any keyword title. So it really isn't an issue. I, I humor them. I just brought up here my videos over the last seven years. Okay, one video has been up for nine years and it's done very well. But uh, over 350,000 views, the, the, the most popular video in the last seven years, learning Russian, difficulties and tips. Second most popular, learning French, difficulties and tips. And then the third most popular, para aprender idiomas, hay que escuchar y leer mucho. I mean, I guess if you have the word learn and languages in there, it works. And it's also what I want to talk about. So there's really not a contradiction. I, I'm not bothered by it. I just humor, you know, my son who pushes me to, you know, make sure you use these keywords. Okay, I'll use. All right, thanks very much. And Elizabeth, what about you? Yes, I, I share the vision from Jim and May. And I think also a, it's a mix between uh, what the, the, the people are searching because they are already interested in this topic. But uh, it's also your point of view of, of something that you really with passion uh, want, want to share. And um, for, for instance, uh, in my channel, um, I have the worst makeup ever in my most popular video. Also, I, I would, uh, also, of course, <laughs> I, don't, I didn't thought about that, but it's true. And it was a, a day like another one. But this video, it's, uh, it has exploded. Um, it's very funny because I think people like uh, numbers. When they see numbers in a title, they think, ah, they go to the po straight to the point. I am going to um, to learn sex, 20, 10, or whatever things. And they like that. Um, I've seen that in my videos because the first one and the, the 
the two and the first and second one more popular videos for my channel have numbers in the title but um uh, i also say that um you have to share something or at least uh, at least i do uh, i i always share something that i really know i mean uh, it, you don't have to know everything about a topic but you have to know what you are talking about and um, you don't have to, um, to 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 be like i know everything about that no no i always say that w what i know about this topic uh, i'm going to share with you in this video and that's why I, how i do it and that works very well because then the people on the comments uh, leave uh, the, their opinions or compliment the, 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 this is the, the, the topic or the, the video or, the, or, or um, give more ideas for another video because you can research from this topic and that's how I enjoy with the video. <laughs> All right, thanks very much. And uh, yeah, so we've been talking about one of the challenges of YouTube. Um, but maybe you can uh, all tell me what other challenges or what the biggest challenge for you is uh, that you have had or currently have with YouTube. What makes uh, YouTube difficult? What, what, what's your channel uh, challenge there? And uh, let's start with Anya again. Wow, that's a hard question. If I had just two minutes. <laughs> um, so specifically for YouTube, you're asking, right? Okay, yep. um, I think what I find hard right now uh, with YouTube and sometimes it discourages me maybe a little bit is that there's so many other things out there. So for example, Instagram or uh, even now Clubhouse and, and other channels that allows you to, to be so creative. And I feel like YouTube Yes, I mean, you can, through editing, you can be very creative in your video too. But I, I like this, well, I, I, in general, I enjoy technology a lot and technology trends and social media trends. I like that a lot. And, uh, and so YouTube, now they have the, the short stars, I think they're called. But still, it's, it's not the same. And, and then you, you see the reels and, um, on Instagram and, and then you see like uh, clubs uh, on Clubhouse. And, and so I think that's for me a, a hard part that YouTube is kind of, yes, they do improve, but it is a bit like still the same. Like, I don't know, I feel like they don't advance uh, as fast as, as other uh, channels maybe. Um, but then again, what is good about YouTube that it's really a social media channel that is, um, yeah, long-term orientated. So while I see it on other channels like Instagram or Reel, uh, Reel on Instagram, it, it's it's going to work for maybe a week or yeah, maximum a week or a post for two days. Uh, YouTube is really long-term thinking. And I think that's what I enjoy a lot uh, about YouTube. But the challenge is to to not get too much distracted uh, with uh, other channels as well. I think that's right now one of my uh, challenges. But if I think about it, then maybe something else <laughs> will come to my mind. But uh, so far it's that, definitely. All right, thanks very much. And uh, before I ask uh, Jim and May, can you write in the chat what you're more interested uh, to find out about language learning or about um, being on YouTube? And uh, while you write, let's go over to Jim and May. For us, I think our biggest challenge is consistency. Uh, trying to um, post more, you know, it's always like, oh, what are you doing if you're not posting videos, right? But there are so many other things, like Anja was saying, there is Instagram and Facebook, and now we have the podcast, and, you know, there's always something trying to um, get our attention, but for the longest part, I think, um, YouTube has been our biggest challenge. <laughs> Yeah, you really have to be consistent and you also have to be sort of consistent with your topic too. There's been a few times where we thought, well, we should split our channel because some people are complete beginners and maybe they're interested in learning Spanish, but maybe they're a little bit more interested in what it's like to live in Mexico. So when we talk about 
the cultural aspect, I feel like there's a little bit of a divide in our channel because some people think they want to learn Spanish, but maybe they're more interested in just visiting or retiring in Mexico, for example, or Puerto Rico. We get a lot of people who reach out for resources uh, about that. And so it's a little tricky because it seems like YouTube also rewards, um, rewards you when your subscribers come back and watch all of your videos. So if you come out with a new video, a good chunk of your subscribers are gonna come, up, come out and watch that video. But if the topic is a little different, if they subscribe because you are producing language focused content, but then you talk about culture content, some people aren't as interested in that, or they're not as interested in uh, the best places to visit in Mexico um, and vice versa. So there's that split and that can give YouTube mixed signals. So uh, part of the, tr the problem is just the algorithm itself is that some people will want to watch both those types of uh, topics, but um, if they're not all watching your videos, that tells YouTube, oh, okay, well, when they switch it up like this, we're only going to show the video to half of their audience uh, because the people who like the language content aren't showing up to watch this video about culture content. Thank you. And Steve, what about you? What's your biggest challenge? Well, I, I don't really see a, a challenge, but just to comment on some of the, the you know, comments that were made here by the other panelists. Um, first of all, I think to be successful, I think you have to be real. So talk about things that matter to you and you have your style and your style is not going to please everyone. Uh, I have a certain style. I, I can remember, for example, uh, Moses McCormick, who recently passed away. He had very tragically, by the way, he had a style which you could say was slow and he talked in a very folksy way and he'd say the same thing over and over again, which was an excellent teaching style. And, but there are people who are going to say, you know, get to the point, uh, you know, and people get on my channel, you know, you whatever, you know, you boomer, old white fart or whatever. It doesn't matter. You're always going to get this. So you have to be true to who you are. So that's the first point. Uh, I'm not bothered really by anything. I ignore all of the things, the different ways that YouTube will, will promote you if you do this, that, and the other. I just say what I have to say. I have a limited range of ideas that I uh, share with my audience. I'm also not distracted by, I don't know, I went to Clubhouse, I got out of there fast, Instagram, all these other things. Uh, part of it is, and, and someone asked in the chat there, language learning. I'm very much input-based oriented. I speak when I have the opportunity, when I have people that I want to communicate with, but the rest of the time I'm input-based. And the advantage of YouTube is that all of my videos, people, and many of my viewers are actually learning English. So I make a point of speaking clearly, and all of those videos then can be imported into link or they're available as lessons. I also can bring stuff in from YouTube in other languages. So I think you, YouTube from a language learning perspective is great. And it can be paired with podcasts because very often, and again, if it comes in as a lesson, you can listen to it. You don't have to be watching the video the whole time. But uh, so I, I'm, you know, I, I like uh, um, YouTube. I think it's excellent for sharing with the language learning community and as a place to find content, which can also be converted into podcasts. So I'm a fan. Great, great. And Elizabeth. Yeah, the challenge I have right now is that we are always uh, all from, uh, we are all working from home and uh, also homeschooling. That's like, I cannot say a bit of, uh, Please shut up! I have to record a new video. <laughs> that's what that's uh, nowadays my biggest challenge. But um, uh, I also think that um, we have to be always creative, and we are not every day so creative uh, like uh, like the, the other day. We ha uh, we have to um, get inspired and. Uh, surprise our audience because when you are always doing the same they are uh, you you are constant um that's a good point that's also may say that it's very different difficult to be constant and to publish constant videos but um when you surprise your audience with a, uh, another video that 
they are not going to expect, but in your style, like Steve said, um, I think that's the that's the big challenge. Um, always to surprise uh, a little bit your audience. That's the the challenge that I like to always have. Great, thank you. And uh, now let's get to the topic of language learning. Um, we probably only have time for one more question. So let's, everyone here has learned at least one foreign language to fluency. Some have learned much many more like Steve. Um, so let's hear it from you. What is your number one language learning tip uh, to get to fluency in any language? Anya, what about you? Why is it always me first? <laughs> you're, um, you're in the top left corner for me, so. <laughs> no, don't worry. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, in the opening session um, where I participate as well, and, and Steve as well, um, I said something that has helped me in, in general in, in life, not only with language learning, but in general in life. And I think uh, everything that we have seen the past year um, makes that even uh, stronger. So. We do have all different opinions on, on language learning. Steve said that about input. For me, for example, it's a lot output actually and a lot of contact uh, to, to native speakers. So that's for me very, very different actually. But um, what I think is the most important and what I see with so many of our language learners that are part of our communities to learn Spanish, to learn German or to learn Nahuatl, is the motivation. So it doesn't matter. You can have the best book, you can have the best teacher, you can have the best strategy whatsoever. If you're not motivated enough, if, if you lose motivation, then at some point uh, you're gonna stop learning or you're gonna stop investing time. And, and I think you, you just need to invest time. There's no way around this. So your motivation is, is the most important uh, point. And in the end, we always find excuses in life, right? Um, for everything, like uh, the same for fitness, for doing exercise and so on. And so this uh, saying that exists um, that says uh, it's in life, it's 10% it's what happens to you and 90% how you react to it. And I think that's so true with everything in life. Um, there was a coronavirus. Yes, in, in many terms, it has uh, made life more difficult for many people. But it's in the end, it's how you react to every single situation in life because it will affect us definitely things like uh, the coronavirus or other things in life, but it depends very much on your reaction to that and, and not losing your motivation. I think that's my number one recommendation. Um, if you fail yourself through losing motivation, then you're gonna fail the language as well, or at least you have to take a break then I guess. So work on the motivation and, and try to make the best out of the 90% that you can control. Thank you. And Jim and May? Yeah, well, for me, it's finding someone to speak with. Like, as soon as I met Mai, I had a lot more motivation to learn Spanish. And I've been slowly learning German for years, but I don't have the same motivation because I don't have uh, as many friends who speak German. Uh, thankfully, I met you all today, which it seems like most of you also speak German. So that's a big motivator for me to know that, oh, okay, there's there's some other people I could practice with. But for me, it does come back to the motivation. If you have someone you can practice to, practice with, then it's something to look forward to. Like, oh, I learned this new phrase and I use it now in a conversation. And to feel like you're advancing in that way, I think is, is one of the biggest ways to stay motivated and one of the biggest ways to remember what you learn because you get that, uh, that reward when you actually use it and it, uh, the other person understands what you said. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, listening, reading, a lot of input really helps. You can find topics um, that are interested, interesting to you. And I you know like the internet is full of everything you like, right? If you like cooking, find cooking channels in the in your target um, language. If you like reading, go through all the books you can. So be always um, consuming um, material in your target language. That's going to help you a lot. Yeah, and probably input, Steve, you're going to second to that. Well, I'm not, I'm going to say, um, 
you know, do what you enjoy doing. Minimize the frustrations. Don't do things you don't enjoy doing. So for some people, they're more interested in having conversations with people. Uh, other people, like myself, uh, get great satisfaction out of being able to read things and hear things and understand things. But the main thing is to minimize things that are frustrating. So if you enjoy grammar, by all means. If you don't enjoy grammar, don't worry about it. Let the language come to you. The brain will sort a lot of things out on its own. And so my message is always enjoy the process, minimize things you don't like doing and focus on things you do enjoy doing in the language. Great, thank you very much. And uh, we've almost come to the end. Uh, so let's have Elizabeth as uh, our last voice. Thank you, Gabriel. Yes, I would also say the same uh, like Steve, uh, enjoying is for me uh, very, very important, but uh, starting also. Because like uh, Anya said, uh, we have a lot of excuses and a lot of people say, I would love to, I would love to, um, but um, the, only, the only way to learn is start learning. Um, a little bit of grammar is necessary, but not a lot. And uh, you, have, you have to enjoy by, uh, you have a lot of opportunities. You have um, something visual, videos, you have some song, songs um, that uh, are really um, also with uh, your, your culture for the, uh, for, for the language. And you can also talk to someone. Um, uh, you have to say what are you interested in and enjoy um, the way. Great, thank you very much. Thank you very much to all the pa uh, panelists. And uh, yeah, so this video is recorded. So uh, everybody who wants to rewatch it, feel free to do that uh, with the recording. And uh, there were a few questions and we couldn't uh, get to all of them, but feel free to visit the YouTube channels or other channels of our panelists and uh, ask them further questions. Um, so thank you everyone, everyone for participating and I uh, hope uh, you have a lot of fun for the, today and to, tomorrow as the last day of Expolingua.